Hi friends, welcome back to Beccarelli's Books. Today I wanted to talk about different pages that we could use in Junk Journal. I did a little video about a beginner journal cover, one of these, and I did this one, and I also did a little baby one, but of course I can't put my hands on that. Oh no, there it is, this little teeny tiny one. And I thought, well, I had a good reaction to that video and I thought maybe people might like to see the kinds of papers that you can use in your journals um, because we all have different things and it can be overwhelming if you've never made one and what kind of paper you're looking at and you feel like you need vintage everything or you need printables, but you don't. And you don't need vintage everything. Mixing them together is a really good idea. Um, but this is my um, my little stash. And just keep in mind that I've been collecting paper for over 15 years. <laughs> so don't feel like um, you need to have a basket looking like this. Because you don't. And I also work in a school. So I have access to different things and it's an old school that I started in um, four or five years ago and it needed a bit of a refresh the library and the office so um, I got to grab a few bits and bobs from there but I'll show you the types of things that I have in here that you can find in op shops and things like that so First up, we've got dictionary pages, tiny little dictionary pages. These were given to me. We've got simple receipts. Um, you know, these could be your own receipts. These could be ones that you find on Etsy. Uh, you can find them in op shops, in bundles when businesses sort of clean out their stuff they might just drop a whole heap of stuff in the op shop uh, book pages now you might look through your book pages and go oh that's a bit boring but none, none of it is boring none of it it might not be to your taste but it might be to someone else's taste and when you're journaling anyway you're covering a lot of things up so like this page here I think it's cool with the date on it, but I don't think this actual paper is that old. It's just talking about that point in time, which is pretty cool. Same with that one. This is a, a flyer, and it's not old. It doesn't look old. It's just a little flyer about crops. You can pick things like this up from garden centres, um, and you know places like um, you might go to actually you know where you can pick stuff like that up from um, when you go to your supermarket like uh, like a mall or um, a shopping center they usually have an information board and they might have um, little leaflets and pamphlets and things for different different things you can pick things up like that uh, this is uh, a book page that has been avocado dyed probably not an old book page but it looks old now uh, just different book pages all sorts of books there kids books kids books are great if you can find some vintage kids books, this actually came from um, a little golden book. These pages are canvas that I had. These were purchased when back in my scrapbooking days and I never used it. So I had this packet, I think it's Prima. So I just cut them up to use in my journals. Acetate. I just folded a piece of acetate that I had lying around in half. These are vellum sheets, printed vellum sheets. 
plain vellum sheets. Print, uh, these um, are made from, I think these might have been photocopied and then beeswaxed to, to be like vellum, which they smell beautiful and they look cool. Um, what's this? This is more of an architectural book. So another place you can look for, for old books is your local library. Your library will do a clean out um, of, bro of books with broken spines, torn covers, anything that's not repairable. Um, they will more than likely give away. But I suggest that you go in and talk to your librarian and ask her or him um, what they do with their books that are destroyed, um, you know, and if they give them away, ask them if you can have some. They might take your details, give you a call. They might um, just keep a pile ready for you to come back to. Um, don't leave it too long because... That you, yeah, they wouldn't appreciate that. I don't think having to hold on to things for too long. Uh, this, these pages are from an old guest book, I believe from the nineties. Came in a pack that I, um, a box that I bought of stuff. Same with that. That came in a swap. So there's another idea. Do some swaps with people. You might have an abundance of fabric or um, heaps of lace or you know lots of something if you've got lots of something ask somebody who has lots of something else if they'll do a little swap with you on Facebook is a good idea um, I don't know where I got these from but these are like a reproduction of a magazine um, <clears throat> Wallpaper. Vintage wallpaper can be hard to come by. I have been lucky enough to get two full rolls of vintage wallpaper, which I sell pretty big pieces in my shop, um, in my Etsy shop. I got them from a reuse centre. But I, before I found them, I was like, I really want to play with some wallpaper. So I looked on the Bunnings website and I bought a whole bunch of samples. They weren't cheap. They were like 5 to $8 a sample, but they were pretty big. And considering how much we actually use in our craft, I think that was a pretty good deal. Um, so I got like flopped wallpaper and like I got a lot more than that. I got a really big piece. I mean, big when I say big, what? I don't know how big it was, maybe a metre by a metre or something like that. But I cut pieces up. I got this really nice um, shimmery one. Uh, I got this. This is uh, embossed. It's really lovely. And then some of the other wallpapers I've gotten from Etsy. And I've bought wallpaper packs. More book pages from different magazines. Another place to get really a lot, you can get a lot of paper, um, is knitting pattern books. Vintage knitting pattern books seem to be everywhere in around my area. Um, so check out your op shops for those. Uh, I have got some vintage um, diary pages. These came in a Happy Mail or I purchased them. So when you go on Etsy, you can uh, look up vintage paper packs. A couple of shops in Australia that I use are Rosellas and Roses. I just did a haul on my channel, so you can check that out. Um, Bellbird Vintage, she has some really lovely things as well. I'll, I'll link a bunch of shops that I purchased from in Australia and the other shop that I use which is in France to buy my French um, receipts is excuse my French and that's Vanessa's shop she's lovely uh, I'm actually waiting for another order from her too um, the other thing that you can find 
in your op shops are vintage recipe books. And you can get pages like whoop, pages like this from vintage recipe books. They might be a bit tattered or whatever. Uh, music. These are community music books. These are the covers. I got a whole bunch of these. That's the back cover. I got these years and years and years and years ago, like before I ever scrapbooked. Um, I don't know why I bought them, to be honest, because I never did anything like this kind of thing. But they were they. I was drawn to them and I bought them. I bought like maybe eight of them, um, and I'm I'm nearly out. <laughs> So, yeah, but I like the covers. Um, different books that I've got pages from that have been given to me as well. Things like um, old shorthand books or TAFE um, textbooks. So textbooks are something that you can pick up as well. Um, I've got a couple of textbooks from my kids, like old... Um, Mass textbooks and things like that. Those pages are quite interesting. Dictionaries from there as well. They don't have to be super vintage. This book, it was uh, an indoor plant book. And I took out all of the really beautiful pages. And I have them further along in here. But these are the plainer pages. And I've just put those together. So that I can put some of those in as well as these prettier pages like this uh, this I think is some kind of plant book or or um, a dictionary type book more dictionary um, my friend Leanne she sent hi Leanne <laughs> she sent me a whole bunch of beautiful other language pages out of stuff now I have looked in some antique shops at other language books vintage ones and they are expensive but if you really love it then you think about how many journals you would get out of a $20 book and you just put maybe one page in each signature you would get a lot of that page in your journal, especially if you're selling them. Um, I still haven't <laughs> brought myself to buy one, but I've done lots of swaps with people and gotten lots of great um, other language pages as well. Uh, almanacs, if you can find an almanac, they've got some really great pages. Um, what else? Anything botanical, all your botanical books have got great images. Um, if you are looking for someone who uses photography in their journals, Nat Williams, absolutely phenomenal journals, and she uses a lot of photography as opposed to illustrations, and she does a phenomenal job with that. Um, again, the kids... Um, vintage learning books uh, more of those botanical pages this uh, this is from a relatively new kids book it was a book about a magpie and the cover had been ripped off so I took that but the, the colors in the uh, illustrations is beautiful so I have used I use those. Now the um, the book that we all want. Everybody wants the Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. This book is beautiful. It really is. But if you don't have it, oh well, it doesn't matter. They're hard to get in Australia. I bought this this particular one and I paid way too much for it. I read it from cover to cover. And now I've pulled it apart. And I recently got gifted one. Through, well, I bought it, but it was it was a very special addition to a box that I bought. And it's a different size. It's bigger. But keep your eye out because that's one to get and you'll love it. But if you don't get one, 
don't stress <laughs> like it's it's just one thing and I think they're difficult to use unless you're doing a themed journal I don't tend to put them in my journals because they are a bit difficult to use the color of the pages is very yellow um, so if you're looking to do vintagey browns and things they it stands out um, music paper music paper you can get it pretty much anywhere 50 cents for a sheet music book in Australia um, all of your op shops so check them out bird books I've got a couple bird books these these images here they came from um, a bundle of papers that I bought from Bellbird Vintage I think Kay my friend Kay might have given me this in a happy mail um, dictionaries old dictionaries this paper is absolutely gorgeous look at the coloration around the edge of that so look at old dictionaries um, this is cutting instructions from a knitting book this is black and white illustrations from a um, children's book more um, Japanese book page there these are the pages out of um, like a how to you know it's what's this to do with uh, accounting I think or a business administration course I did business administration at TAFE and I remember some of these things I did shorthand I did typing I did you know all of the accounting and all of that and the books that we used in the 90s were very similar to that if not that <laughs> Um, so if you can't find any of this, grab yourself some plain papers. So we'll just flick through. Oh, here. Current diary pages. This is a 2023 diary. I really like the colour of the pages. I like the writing. I like the layout. I don't care that it's 2023. I actually think it's cute, cool to put a current year page in my diaries that I make. Uh, in my journal, sorry. So I've been doing that. Um, so definitely use those. Oh, kids' workbooks, current or, you know, not old. Pull them apart, dye the pages. They look vintage. No one would ever know. Um, magazine pages, all of that. But flip. let's flip forward. Flip forward. Oh, uh, wrapping paper. This is not vintage wrapping paper. I have... Um, wet it and let it dry so it goes all bubbly and wrinkly looks old so that's if you don't want to color it you can just wet it scrunch it up give it a wet uh, atlases old atlases maps great idea maps these are um, placemats paper placemats well they're not paper I don't know what they are, but they're not real sturdy, but they'll um they'll make pretty pages in a book. Uh, these are draw liners. Um, be careful if they are scented. Sometimes they the scent is very overpowering. Packaging. So this is your plain papers. Packaging from your orders, you know, when they just shove brown paper in your boxes iron it if you want it straight easy as baking paper um, use it to cover your trays when you're doing your coffee and tea dyeing and then once they've been in the oven they get nice and crispy they're beautiful and you can write on it um, so these are just all your pl all my plain papers most of them come from notebooks kids exercise books um, I have some really pretty bond paper and I got that from an op shop, but you can buy that from office works. You know, if you, if you really can't purchase this stuff from a thrift shop, go and buy a packet and you know, you'll be happy <laughs> and you'll use it. Um, and like I said, kids, this kind of like writing paper for kids learning how to write, that's a bit of interest. 
grid paper is fun. Coloured paper, that's also fun. And this actually dyes up really nice with your coffee and your tea. Um, and when you... So, see here, this, this notebook, before I actually clued myself in, I just tore these out of the ring binder. So you've got all of these torn edges. And then I had an epiphany back here somewhere. And I took the ring binder out like I just undid it. So where are they? Hello, where are you? And you just leave the holes in the top. Where are they? They're in here somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe they're not in here somewhere. But here, I've done it here with these index cards. So these index cards were on a spiral. And I've just taken the spiral off so that I can have the, the circles rather than the tear. If that makes sense. And that they actually look really nice. Left on there like that. Um, yeah, coloured paper dies up nice. Um, just your regular cop copy paper. Um, I've shared on my channel, not how to, I didn't do it, but I did talk about um, where to buy these um, placemats from Shein. Very cheaply. I've been looking at op shops for years and I've found it too in the years and years and years of me searching for plastic doilies and things like that and I managed to find a whole heap of really pretty designs on Shein which I purchased and I've been madly coffee dyeing um, yeah have a look when you when you're just going shopping have a look in your supermarkets have a look in the stationery section of your supermarket in your news agents have a look at the different types of paper, different sizes. Um, get yourself a corner rounder. You can round your corners and make them look a little different. Um, yeah, every every type of paper can be used. Newspaper can be used. Magazine paper, junk mail. Um, get yourself some gesso. You can paint over anything that you don't like. If you want to do something bright rather than vintage, um, you can dye those as well with your distress inks. Use your acrylic paint. Um, food uh, food colouring is a good dye. Yeah, so just have a look everywhere. Everywhere there's paper is what you can put in your, your books. Um, but as I was saying with putting them together... You know, taking some vintage and some new paper and putting them together um, is completely fine. It doesn't have to be all vintage paper in a vintage book, I don't think. Um, and at the end of the day, if you're new to junk journaling and you just want to have a go, make a whole book with coffee dye or just, just plain office paper, you know. Just get in and have a go. Because once you start making them, you'll get better and better at um, all of the processes of construction. And you won't feel like you might mess up when you start using your real, like, coveted vintage papers. Because I have a few um, really beautiful old um, ledger papers that they're my hoardy papers. I don't want to use them. I've made them into digitals so I don't have to and they work just fine like there's another option if you really want to go down that road is digital things and I I buy digitals scrapbook paper you know the list goes on and on and on um but have fun with it and just make one just make one because it's addicting so addicting I've um I don't know. I don't even know how many journals I've ever made, but um, I've made a lot. Yeah. So anyway, that's my little video for the day. I just want to talk about paper and the next one I'll be putting some papers into the um, beginner journal that I'm making. 
Alrighty. Thanks for joining me for this little chit chat and I hope you're having a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.